get a £5 free bet every week with Offer Club from William Hill. Simply stake a total of £20 or more across the week on pre-match football accumulators with four or more selections and you'll get a £5 free bet on the Friday. Join William Hill Offer Club on mobile or online now. James Holder, IFL TV, in association with Macklin's Jim Marbauer. With me, I've got none other than Michael Conlon. We're here in Belfast, just had his announcement, homecoming press conference, signing with top rank and MGM Marbella. Yep. Firstly, congratulations on such a big moment in your career, mate. Cheers, Jim. Thank you. How do you think today went? It went very well. I think, uh, you know, top rank coming over to the Belfast, that would press conference is, is special. Like, you know, mm. a big American promoter like Nemans and the president coming over on private jet and stuff, that, they have a press conference. Fantastic. I mean, we spoke about this in the, in the press conference today at the Olympics when sort of what happened when he was robbed of that moment, yeah. if you like, to, to progress in the tournament. You thought that this has sort of been taken out of your grasp and yeah. you may not get this moment. Yeah, I didn't think this kind of moment would have came and I didn't think the, the opportunity would have arisen, but you know, it has, thankfully. Uh, my reaction has kind of prompted, I think, you know, uh, but you know, I'm, I'm just happy with how everything's worked out. You know, after the Olympics, I was devastated, obviously, mm. with how everything went, but you know, it is what it is, and we're here now. I know you spoke to Coogan about yeah. your actions after with the final decision. Yeah. I mean, do you regret that now? Do you, do you embrace that moment now? It's quite an iconic moment yeah. of that Olympics. If you no, de definitely don't regret it. You know, it is what it is. I don't want, uh, if, I, if I didn't do it, you know, probably sitting here today with a lot of regret that I didn't do it. So mm. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I've done it, and you know, I would do it again if it was in the same situation. The support that you seem to, to gain after mm. that moment, not just from Irish fans, from boxing fans all yeah. around the world, that thought it's been unjust and yeah. the fact that the judges were suspended, do you think that all added to the the whole sort of the scenario, the situation? Yeah, I think so. You know, it's everything that's happened since now, you know, 36 of the judges, all, all the judges, sorry, all 36 of the judges that were in the Olympics have been stood down. So it just says her. What I've done is, is just, you know, I had to do it and oh, I'm really happy with that. Let's talk a little bit about relocating. You've decided to base yourself in LA, which yeah. is not an easy decision for a young man at 25 to decide to up sticks and base. Can you talk to me about why you chose the training you've chose and, and the gym that you've chose? I think, you know, the reason to leave is because of the facilities and, and the feeders and the smart and, and the coaching you'll get over there. You know, there's not many, I wouldn't say there's many really world, world class coaches here that you can choose from. In, in Ireland and the UK, there is fantastic coaches. But I believe the best coaches are in America. Uh, so I think going over there and training with Manny Robles, who I think is a fantastic coach. He has Jesse Magdaleno, who's playing for World Football. He has uh, Jason Quigley, one of my, one of my ex teammates. Diego Magdaleno yeah. as well. Diego Magdaleno. Uh, Oscar Valdez, who's world champion. You know, and these guys are, are in my weight division, you know, uh, Jesse and Oscar. So you know, it's great sparring. That's probably one of the main reasons to sparring. You know, I have them sparring partners. With that. It's been a big influence on your yeah. career so far. Big influence on the on the high performance squad in yeah. Ireland. How will you face going to battle with you like without John Conlon in your corner? The fact that he's been there to mentor you all the way through your journey thus far. I think it will. I'll be okay. I think you know. I've, I uh, when I went when I turned on the the Irish setup, you know, he was still in Ulster, so you know I was training the way and I was fighting the way without him. You know, I was used to it then, but I'll just have to get used to it again. You know. Anywhere I go, anyway, he'll be there. He'll be at my fights, and him and Jamie, you know, their their voices are always here when I'm fighting, and people who always listen to, and people always text me advice. So, you know, they're both very, very big influences in my career, and always will be. With the top ranked promotions, the MGM, your profile as big as it is in Northern Ireland, yeah. Ireland, and the UK. Do you feel you can be fast tracked into fight, fighting for a world title sooner than other fighters? Yeah, I think so. You know, I think I can fight for world title probably as fast as I want. Uh, when we were over in, in LA, I was speaking, or sorry, in, in Vegas, when we were saying and stuff, I was speaking to the, the WBO president and he was asking me how quick do you want me to, do you want to fight for the title and stuff? So, you know, it would be great. Uh, it would be great to fight for the title very quick, but, you know, we'll see how Top Rank want to want move me. Do you think it's a, maybe a tad disrespectful for some of the journalists today to mention a fight, fight with Carl Frampton, the fact that he is yeah. a two weight? world champion yeah. the fact that it could happen down the line would be yeah. massive but I think it's a bit sort of a bit fortuitous to mention that at this point yeah it? definitely you know I think 
me and Carl are at, at different ends of the, of the of the scale at the minute. You know, he's world champion. And he's a two-weight world champion, uh, a unified champion. You know, Carl's a fantastic fighter, fighting Leo Santa Cruz here again, which I think he'll win again. Uh, and you know, I'm I'm nowhere near there at the minute. You know, I'm, I haven't had my first fight, so it is probably for me as well. You know, I've said in the past, you know. I want to fight Carl, but you know, it's, it's silly talk at the minute. You know, I'll talk about it two years down the lane when I'm ready to fit for a world title. But for for now, for journalists, to say it, no, it's probably a bit stupid. Yeah. What adjustments have you got to make personally for the professional boxing to your amateur boxing? We saw Frankie Gavin suffer yeah. defeat against Sam Eggett and Anthony Gogo took a bit yeah. of a pasting against Craig Cunningham yeah. recently as well in the same on the same card in Birmingham. What adjustments do you feel you need to make? to become a complete fighter in the professional ring? I think the longer rounds are going to play a big part in it. Uh, I have to get used to the longer rounds. I'm used to doing five rounds anyway in WSB. I was going to say, the WSB experience, yeah, no head that's, guard recently. Must that's kind of brought me into the, the pro style a bit more. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's kind of took away a bit of the time of having to learn and change styles mm-hmm. because I've done WSB now with a scoring system as well. Uh, it's different from when Frankie and uh, I used to fit in amateurs. It was point scoring, so it's more of a pro scoring style. So. The stage kind of changed for it already, so I think I just need to sit down and punch a bit more uh, and just do the longer rounds. When we speak to fighters who go abroad to train camp, the main sort of regret and the main hardship is being away from your family, mm. especially if you've got youngsters and a yeah. young family. How beneficial is it that your family have made the decision to come to LA with you? How beneficial yeah. is that to you as a fighter and as a man? I think it's very beneficial. You know, I think it's huge the fact that they're going to come out there with me. Uh, I think as a family unit, we're very strong and uh, they're part of my team, so they make my team very strong. And if they're happy, I'm happy. So the fact that I have them out there, it'll keep me happy. I'll, I'm able to see their faces and not missing them. And uh, it's a big decision for them as too, you know, I, I could have been in the room myself, it would have been hard, it would have been really hard for me, but for them it would have been really hard too, so the fact they're going to come out, I think it's going to be one of the key factors in, in, in me perform well. When you think of the names top rank of Propel to stardom, the likes of Oscar De La Hoya, Mayweather, yeah. some great, great fighters past and present, you're going to yeah. be headlining at Madison Square Gardens on St. Patrick's Day, yeah. so this shows the faith they've got in you, how does that make you feel as a fighter? I think. <laughs> it's hard to explain because you know I'm I'm, I'm getting mentioned there with, with the greats of boxing. Uh, what they have done for fighters in the past is unbelievable, and that's that was the main reason I chose them was because because it propelled so many people to the world titles from the amateurs. Uh, I feel that they have picked me in great faith and, and great belief in me, which gives me great faith and belief in myself. A lot more self confidence added to me, uh, and you know. It's special to be an national and type of fighters and being with this kind of team. Starting out at Super Bantamweight? Yeah, yeah. Super, Super Bantamweight. Bantamweight. Super Bantamweight. Super Bantamweight. It'd be too big for Bantam now. I had a chance in hell to make Bantam, you know. I'll squeeze myself in the Bantam, win a world title of Bantamweight, move up, or Super, sorry, Super Bantamweight it was, move up in the Featherweight and hopefully win a world title there, and then move up in the Super Featherweight and finish off in Super Featherweight and win a world title. You see yourself being a multi-weight yeah. world champion by the end of your career? Yeah, 100%, you know. I know I have the ability. Uh, in the past, in the amateur game, you know, I've, I've done things people haven't done. I was the first man in uh, Ireland ever to win a world title. You know, the first, the second one in the UK with Frankie Gavin. But uh, you know, completely different styles, me and Frankie. So uh, I feel that I'm going to be one of Ar- probably Ireland's greatest ever fighter. Can you promise the people of Belfast and Ireland and? No doubt a lot of people in the UK that they are going to get a chance to watch you fight on these shores. Yeah. What, will we see you in 2017 potentially yeah. back here fighting? Yeah, 100%. You know, we've guaranteed one fight a year in Ireland. At least one fight a year in Ireland. Uh, Ireland guaranteed. Uh, Ireland or UK, guaranteed. Uh, you know, so it's definitely going to happen. I think maybe next summer possi- it could be a possibility. Uh, I'm not too sure yet, but you know, it'd be great to have all the lads on the card and have a big uh, family homecoming. How have you taken it? I know you're going to be a bit scared of this, of rival Katie Taylor turning yeah. pro. Now that she's given you a few beatings in the gym, <laughs> as well as Paddy. Yeah. How do you take the news that, that Katie's turning over with Eddie? Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. I think it was the best move for her, the same with Eddie. Uh, you know, Eddie will do wonders for her. He'll promote her very, very well. And Katie's a huge star, you know. In Ireland, she doesn't even need to be promoted. She can just come and turn up, and I mean, I mean, the place will sell out. So, you know, it's 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 a great move, a great move by Eddie, smart move by Eddie, and uh, I feel great for Katie because you know, she had a, a a bad run in the Olympics, but she's a lot better than what she showed. 
last word on Paddy Barnes, yeah. his debut next week. Seems a bit overshadowed by you this week, Paddy yeah. Barnes. No doubt he won't be best pleased about that, to say yeah. the least. But <coughs> how excited are you to see him turning over and making his debut? Yeah, I'm, I'm delighted for Paddy. You know, me and him have been on the same team together for the last so many years. So, you know, to see him fighting live here as a professional next week, I'm really looking forward to it because I know how hard he can punch. And even though he's one of the later guys, the guy can punch for his weight, I'm telling you. Uh, he'll hurt a lot of people and he'll be he'll be a world champion very soon the next year. I was waiting on him kicking off today and, and, and going up and kicking the table or something. I was disappointed today. Oh. He, the cameras was on him, it was his moment and he, he just didn't have the he, didn't he, have the He tweeted tweet this morning saying uh, it's, today's going to be fun so I was waiting on him coming up and doing something or, or calling out Todd the Buck or something, you know. He would have done something crazy like that, you know. That's what I was thinking he was going to do but thank God he didn't. <laughs> Well, listen, uh, wish you the best yeah. of luck with your career. Seth, you, James. Thank you for giving us some time today. No problem. And hopefully, one of us will be out there in New York to sort of capture yeah. and document the, the journey from here on in. Good stuff, James. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you, mate. Thank you.